Hi, welcome to another of our Coffee Time Chats. Today we're joined by Apo Demirtas, founder and CEO at Intelligent Hospitality, the company behind Hotel IQ Decision Cloud. In this discussion, we hear why Apo feels the way hotels forecast top line revenues is wrong and woefully outdated. We touch on a number of topics, but some of those we cover are the flaws in the current way of forecasting, is forward-looking data only a value at a macro corporate level, predictions rather than forecast and the zero-based philosophy, and why is there resistance to change? We get into quite a discussion, so I've broken the video down in the timeline. I hope the conversation is of interest, and as usual, please feel free to comment below. Please don't forget a thumbs up if you like the discussion, and if you don't want to miss out on future videos, hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified. Anyway, let's get started. Roll the intro. Hi, Apo. Welcome to one of our Coffee Time Chats. Uh, it's the afternoon here, so I've actually got tea rather than coffee. But uh, <laughs> how... It's the morning here. I got my coffee here. <laughs> Perfect. How are I you? Can't we... I, can't, I can't see what you have there, but here's, here, here's the proof. It's, yeah, mine's, it's mine's definitely tea. <laughs> how are things for you? You well? Very well. Thank you for asking. How about you? Yeah, very good indeed. Very good indeed. Thank yeah. you. So we've got a, um, a topic today, which is really, I mean, we use these coffee time chats to kind of just talk about some issues or some frustrations or some, goodness me, are they really still doing this? And I think this kind of topic sits into the last uh, category there, which is, are they really still forecasting in this particular yeah. way? And that's that's what we want to touch on today. Get your insights, get your views um, sure. So we'll move into that in a moment. But before we do, could you just give us a, a brief introduction, uh, who Apo is, who I Hotel IQ Decision Cloud, what they are all about? Sure. Thanks, Trevor. Um, yes, I am uh, the founder and CEO of Intelligent Hospitality. Uh, Hotel IQ Decision Cloud is our um, cloud-based software. Uh, this uh, it's it's data management analytics. Uh, Planning and um, and collaboration software for commercial folks in in hotel business. And your background, as well as the founder, before you founded Hotel IQ, can you give us a brief overview? Because you've got a strong hospitality background as well. Yes, that? yes, I do. I, um, I I I have been in hotel business for more than thirty years. Mm -hmm. I started my career as a uh, as a page boy at age sixteen, <laughs> which is which is when I was attending um, a hotel management vocational high school, and then I uh, went through bachelor's uh, and and graduate programs, master's degree program in hotel business, and worked in the industry all my life. Um, and uh, but uh, but I also did my PhD in applied economics. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason for that was because I always felt the absence of uh, scientific decision making in in hotel business. Yeah, you know, we we were raised as quote unquote artists in our own domain, but when it came to running business based on scientific facts and insights. I thought we were really feeble as hoteliers. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, I uh, I went ahead and did my uh, PhD in applied economics. Uh, who knows? I might be the only one. Um, <laughs> I might be the only hotelier with a PhD in applied economics. But anyway, um, and and that has served us well, obviously, and yeah. served me well yeah. personally. And. Uh, and what, what um, brands? What are the, some of the brand hotel groups that you worked? Yeah, you worked with? Uh, yeah. So my first uh, company, uh, following uh, the PhD doctor program that I did, was Hilton. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked for Hilton Hotels Corporation. This is not Hilton Worldwide. Hilton Hotels Corp here in uh, North America, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and then uh, I worked for Intercontinental Hotels Group, and later I joined Jumeirah. Uh, group uh, in Dubai as mm -hmm. their chief sales and marketing officer. Um, and uh, just about 10 years ago, I left Jumeirah to start uh, our company to build Hotel IQ. And 10 years later, it's been exactly 10 years, actually, and here we are. As they say, the rest, the rest is history. And it was important that... History. 
I wanted to kind of tease that out, particularly the PhD element, because we're going to yeah. be coming at things from. Uh, I know one of the topics we're going to touch on is is within that economics field. Um, sure. But what I also wanted to do, it was really important for me that I that anybody listening or watching this understands yes. that this isn't somebody just talking from a technology perspective, telling hoteliers to change, but also has been on that side where they've been the hotelier, where they have been doing exactly what we're going to talk about. So there is right. a realization that please stop doing this. There is another yes. way of doing it. And I'm talking yes. from a position of knowledge, having gone through it, not just yes. talking to you and saying, you know, change because it suits my uh, suits my agenda. So that's why I just wanted to position exactly where where you're coming from. So it's uh, oh, that's uh, you know that's exactly right, Trevor. I appreciate that. Um, you know, uh, there are a ton of those that are out there um, that try to do what you know uh, what you were suggesting, but we're not one of them. We're we're hoteliers, and and at the same time, we have a strong business science. Uh, background mm -hmm. um, and and we whatever we say that uh, hoteliers should do, we did it ourselves in the field. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yes. Okay, then let's kick it off. Uh, let's look at what a vast majority of hoteliers are doing when it comes to mm -hmm. forecasting budgeting, sure. and we're talking here not from the cost side of things. We're talking here from a sales. Uh, from the sales forecasting, sales top budgeting, line. yeah, top line budgeting. Mm -hmm. So, the your proposition right. is that the way that it's done at the moment has numerous flaws, is outdated, and there are significant advantages to approaching it in a different way. But let, let's right. first of all unpick. And again, leaning into your experience, you've been on this side of the fence as well. Let's first of all unpick what it is about, what do you see? How do people budget forecast at the moment? And then what do you see as the flaws in that particular process? Sure. The, uh, the, uh, the way hotels forecast today, or budget, really, mm -hmm. uh, the name is irrelevant. It's the same process uh, they go through. Uh, but it, let, let's just define what budget is and what forecast is first. Uh, budget is, is, is an exercise uh, they go through. Budgeting is an exercise they go through uh, pr uh, before the upcoming year. Usually it starts, they, uh, hotels start in August mm -hmm. uh, or mm -hmm. September, mainly in August, uh, start preparing their forecast for the following year. And that exercise literally takes three or four months. <clears throat> and um, and the forecast is when you when when the hotels enter that new year, uh, they start uh, revising their budget, and they call that re a revision their mm -hmm. forecast, and they keep forecasting from there on. So that's what it is, right? So that we we have the definition out of the way. Now, ex, uh, Microsoft introduced Excel in 1985. <laughs> and the hotels have been forecasting exactly the same way since 1985 using uh, very rudimentary uh, methods and uh, a manual tool like Excel, right? Okay. Uh, and with not much science, really. Uh, it's, very it's been very traditional for hotel companies uh, uh, to go and, and take whatever they did last year, in the previous year, and apply an X percentage, either increase or decrease. For the most part, it's an increase because they usually don't know that something bad is going to happen, right? Sure. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and that everybody's optimistic. And uh, there's an expectation that comes from an ownership group um, or, or perhaps the hotel management company, whatever that might be, that they uh, actually, in, again, increase their uh, top line, rev power, ADR, occupancy, whatever, whatever that might be, uh, based on a certain expectation. And that expectation does not you usually have much of a science. Yeah, and it's, a, it's a percentage increase. I was going. I was going to say, is that what's the logic behind the percentage that not, they choose? Not, that you're saying? Not, not much. If uh, you, you know, a, a hotel company wants to achieve a certain goal, they have a goal for themselves, uh, and that goal might be driven uh, by many factors uh, that are usually not related to the science uh, itself, but uh, but wish list. Let's just call it that. Yeah. 
yeah. and then they go to the hotels, the units, and tell the units to increase, uh, to apply X percentage on their previous year performance. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And that's really that. Uh, it, so it could, it it could well be they need to see growth. So they might say, okay, if I'm sitting in a hotel, if I'm the GM of the hotel, right, we need you to, we need to see an 8% uplift on, on last year in terms of, in terms of growth. You, you, yes, that's usually, that's how it is actually today. And um, uh, there, there is really no science to it. Uh, the closest science there, there is, is they look at the amount of business they have on the books <laughs> for that time frame uh, as of right now. They go, okay, well, that's great, but uh, then we'll probably do a, a X amount more mm -hmm. and apply, on, uh, you know, add that on top of it, and and, and that's your forecast or budget. So, so coming back to your point, if I've got this Excel spreadsheet in front of me, I'm I'm back in September, October time, looking at, I'm I'm budgeting for next year. So let let's say we're talking January to to December. Right. Um, I can see that currently. On, on the books, I can see what I have in January, February, March, and maybe a little bit further out from that, but that's probably right. the, the window I'm, I'm initially going to be focusing on because it's already there. And then I'm going to look at it and say, okay, well, we need an 8% increase. So I just put an 8% multiplier on top of whatever numbers may be sitting in each month at the moment. And, yes. then, and then I then go back and start thinking, all right, so if I've got January, February, March, I've now got to start looking at April, May, June. I may have very little business on the books. So what am I doing? Looking back at what I did um, it, it, April, it, it, April, May, June th this year. I mean, maybe this year is not a good example with, with the pandemic, yeah. but you know, that's yes. the numbers we're working with, isn't it? Yes, that's exactly what it is. I mean, it, uh, if you don't have anything on the books, um, then, then what you do is you look at what you did in the past um, and you apply X percentage on top of it. Um, that's how they do forecasts today. There's really not much uh, science to it. Um, and, and obviously, a company like ours, we come in and, 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 and uh, we, we, we change that. Uh, so what do you, we, see, what do you uh, see as the, as the you know, th there's obviously, because you've been working on developing solutions over the last 10 years to do things mm -hmm. differently, there's obviously mm -hmm. an implication of, forecasting budgeting in that uh, le let's call it legacy rather than an old-fashioned yes. way of doing what are, what are the what are the risk is maybe too strong a word but what are the implications of of taking an approach using excel and just rolling up eight percent if that's the growth i need i mean it's simple it's quick it's simple it's quick it, it, it's uh but then it's in, inaccurate right uh to answer that question, you first need, need to answer this question. What's the purpose of forecasts or budget? Why do we do it, right? Mm -hmm. Why do we uh, work on budget and, and then start uh, revising it from there, uh, which we call forecasts? We, uh, companies do that because they want to put guidance out there, right? Uh, yeah. They want, uh, that's number one. Number two, uh, for planning purposes. Uh, if you know with a a really strong degree of certainty uh, as to what you're going to do uh, in the future. Then you can start planning uh, now mm -hmm. for that time frame. Um, but, um, but 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 now when you use manual tools like Excel and rudimentary uh, methodologies, then your forecast or, or budget is way off. Right. And therefore, the decision that you're going to make, whether it's a planning decision. Uh, or uh, a guidance that you give out will uh, will be wrong, really. Um, if you think about it, uh, a hotel organization is comprised of so many hotels. So you have these budgets or forecasts at unit levels, and you aggregate them. Mm -hmm. and that becomes a company budget or forecast. And if you're a public company, you're giving guidance to the market, right? To 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 ownership, which are the shareholders. Yep. Uh, yeah. it, that might not be as accurate, right? And so that's that's not a good thing for an organization. That it, you know, if you if you come way off your forecast, if the actuals are way off your forecast, that degree that decreases uh, confidence in your organization, and yeah. that'll have a long term financial impact. That's number one. And number two, again, resource planning. You know, uh, if you're way off, you and when I say way off, I don't necessarily mean people usually take that as, oh, okay, I came under 
Yeah. No, <laughs> being off is plus or minus. So you could be off uh, in a plus or minus fashion, right? So you give a guidance out, but then you come out 10% higher. That's not good either. Either way, it looks like you don't know what's going on with your business. You, you it? Exactly. You don't know your stuff is what it means. Yeah. You know, uh, oh, that's the other thing that I want to mention. In hotel business, it's very traditional to come out and, and pound your chest and say, I beat my forecast by 15%. I came over 15%. I made more, 15% more than my, my forecast or budget. That's not something, it's something you should be proud of. <laughs> Oh. At all. Well, but surely be beating your forecast is great, isn't it? No, it's not. I mean, it is. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Financially, obviously, it's great. It's just not great on you because you, you don't know your stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that, that, in turn, will have uh, confidence issues, right? And again, for planning purposes, if you, uh, you, know, if you, then you, you don't necessarily plan your resources uh, appropriately. Um, if you're again, if your actual is coming out of for, uh, coming about 15 20 percent higher than your your forecast, but in in, in any case, uh, those are the challenges, really. That those are sense. the things, yeah, and, absolutely. And if we're looking at, I mean, a lot has changed in the last couple of years through through obviously everyone knows with the, with the pandemic, and this will alter. So, back to your point about hotel groups with multiple properties, multiple different regions, multiple different locations, multiple different impacts on pandemic uh, restrictions and lockdowns. So if I'm looking at my forecast and applying the process that you were talking about, and I'm taking my numbers from previously and adding a multiplier, well, going forward, my market might have changed slightly or, or altered or morphed to a degree i mean is it how much how much forecasting through that forecasting process budgeting process is actually looking into the the market insights as well to to give you give you a a, a stronger guide for the direction you're planning I mean, the market insight, um, uh, it, it comes in so many different uh, shapes and forms, right? Mm -hmm. um, people will tend to get lost in this, what we call market insight. Um, it, it is, it, any kind of market insight onto, out into the future. And there are, there are uh, even tools like that, right? In fact, there's a tool even called uh, Market Insight by OTA Insight. Mm -hmm. um, but what does that really mean, right? So uh, it, it, there, there are a whole bunch of data points, whether it's airline data, weather data, and, uh, and, 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 and supply data. It, it, you know, when it comes to the unit level, uh, to a hotel, uh, hotel level, it, they don't really help much, if any. Here's why. Uh, they're really helpful when it, when it comes to macro views, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if you're if I'm a hotel company and I'm looking at it from a macro uh, standpoint because I'm going to make macro decisions right long term strategic decisions then yes they are helpful but at a unit level at a hotel level not much uh, you know uh, take take OTA insights market insight as an example so they have uh, tons of data good data uh, but on airlines and stuff. Um, so the, you, the, you, you can see uh, airline loads and service to your destination. Let's just say that you're in London, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you look at uh, the airline load factors and 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 and, and so on. But what does that really mean? Uh, if you are a three-star hotel, uh, and you, you have all the airline passenger data, but do you know what percent of them are actually coming to London because they live in London? Mm -hmm. What percent of them are coming to London because they want to visit family and stay with family? Mm -hmm. One percent. Uh, what percent of them are going to stay in shared economy, Airbnb? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and those that are going to stay in hotels, do you know what percent are going to be three-star customers, yep. four-star customers, four-star hotel customers, three-star hotel customers, five-star? You don't know these things. Yeah. So just looking at that kind of a macro information and saying, okay, well, uh, here is my airline data, passenger data, and, um, but if you really don't know, uh, uh, and you're not going to know this and anyway, nobody knows uh, the, the breakdown uh, the way I just, uh, I, I explained it, right? You don't know what percent is going to come to your three, 
come it's going to come to the three star category of no. the hotel industry. Then yeah. it's not helpful. Not as a hotel, you helpful. can't do anything with it, can you? No, 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 no. Yeah, you you have some sense as to what's going to ha it happen in the general marketplace. Yeah, you know there could be demand that's there that you may be able to take advantage of, but how much of that directly relates to you if you're a three star is is a bit of a finger in the air and see which way the wind's blowing. Correct. And if you think about it, all that the impact of of all that macro data is already in your numbers. Here's how. Uh, those airline factors, load factors, those are airline passengers that are booked to fly into London, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then they have already made their hotel reservations. Yeah. And if they actually booked you, it's in your booking pace numbers, mm -hmm. right? For looking booking pace numbers. Yeah. So, so, those, uh, so, so the so you've already captured the demand that's flying yes. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what need what you what you need to measure? is the speed at which your future business on the books changes and the trend line. You need mm -hmm. to monitor that trend line and, 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 and factor it and use that factor to run your assumptions. Now, uh, we have automated forecasting process. Um, you know, we always advocate zero-based forecasting, not necessarily taking what you did in the past and, it, and either applying a percentage on top uh, or maybe decrease, whatever that might be. We don't do that. That's not called zero-based forecasting. Zero-based forecasting is no matter how long you've been around, you start from scratch. You start as, you start as if you're, hoping, you're opening your hotel brand new. And do Sorry, zero Okay, so let me just put, so let's just pause that a minute. So zero-based forecasting. So this is, you're looking at it as if you have a blank sheet of paper. Yes. My hotel is going to open on Monday. <laughs> uh, I've had no business, and I'm now going to forecast from there. Yeah, correct. So how correct. how does uh, that work then? If I haven't got any data, I haven't where where am, uh, how am I starting uh, to pull that together? Right. So zero based forecasting is uh, you know for hotels that have been around. Um, what what it means to them is you don't take a previous years. Uh, it could be last year. It could be the year before. Any previous year is yeah. a baseline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And apply a percentage. Yeah. Um, it, it, you, so you're saying scrap zero that. Based, exactly. Zero based forecasting is taking that all out, all the while understanding the patterns, right? The historical patterns. You don't necessarily take a take a historical year and apply a percentage, but you do need to understand the the patterns. And I'll I'll explain it in a in a minute. Uh, and then you need to uh, measure the propensity. Uh, of 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 how much business that you'll be able to bring uh, into your property, uh, and that is actually where the trick part is. So, when you're uh, looking at forecasting and budgeting, uh, you need to look at what's known first, right? So, what do we know? What what we know for a fact is what we have on the books. We know that, mm -hmm. and uh, what we also know is historical patterns. Meaning, uh, here I am. I'm in August. And uh, let's just call it uh, August 2021. And we are going to bu uh, budget for 2022. So on uh, in August, you know how much business you have on the books for 2022. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you don't know is how much business that you will pick up uh, between August 2021 and December 2022 for the year 2022. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And yep. You, you don't know that. And, and that's the piece, the propensity uh, is, is you need to uh, measure and, and calculate. And to do that, you need to take a look at historical patterns. And uh, how much business did you pick up between August 2019 and, uh, and, and, and um, uh, December 2020? Uh, pardon me. Uh, August 2020 and December 2021 for 2021. Yeah, you, look, yeah. you need to you need to take a look at uh, the 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 way uh, your patterns basically the amount of business that you picked uh, in similar time frames in the past and put that aside. So that's also a known factor, right? Um, but then you need to understand the speed at which your business is changing out into the future, mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. measure that by uh, we call that pace progression. Uh, you need to look at the progression, meaning, meaning the speed at which business changes over time. So you need to take 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 these data points, 
and um, uh, and really come up with. I don't want to reveal the secret sauce that we use. <laughs> no, 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 of course. Within our company, uh, we have what we call. Um, uh, well, again, uh, it's 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 algorithms that we wrote, we wrote ourselves. So we look at the recency of data. Uh, we look at historical patterns, mm -hmm. but the mm -hmm. rec recency of data is is weighted a hell of a lot more mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. than than historical patterns. And then we couple we couple that with AI and machine learning uh, technology. So those are time series models, and we push them through AI and machine mm -hmm. learning technology. Mm -hmm. Uh, to forecast and budget out, and 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 the words forecast and budget are, um, you know, they're just uh, semantics. Really, it's predictions. So they become a lot more, yeah, become a lot more interweaved in the way that you're saying because it's a prediction rather than a constantly adjusting forecast or a revision of a budget or forecast. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I mean, and, and prediction is life. It's it's it, it, it's living and breathing. Uh, methodology. So you're in uh, and, and system constantly predicts as new data comes in, is the data is refreshed, uh, which is uh, nonstop. Uh, then predictions really change. Mm -hmm. uh, think mm -hmm. of it. Um, think think of it this way. Uh, go, you know, I, I, I give this example quite often. I think I told you this before. Um, Google Maps. Yep. Right. Yeah. Uh, so you're 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 at your home and 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 you're going to the center of London, and you put your location and destination, and it, it tells you that you'll get there in an hour and a half, and then you start driving. Suddenly, suddenly, it is one hour and forty minutes. Yeah, something's and, happened. Uh, <laughs> right, right, because new data came in. Yeah. Right, or one hour and twenty minutes. Uh, that whatever that might be. Uh, so. Uh, so for that reason, it's really important to take a look at those predictions all the time, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and 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 that, as a result, uh, completely uh, takes away uh, the 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 reason why people do forecast, create forecasts and budget. Why do we need forecasts and budget anymore? Why not constantly monitor your predictions for whatever time frame that is? It could be next month. It could be the next year, right? And, and so, how long does this roll out? Then, when you're, I mean, are you advocating? Are you advocating then that it's that the approach that hoteliers should be taking is this zero-based forecasting and right. doing predictions rather than forecasting, so, and that could predict out as long as you want it to predict out. So, in terms of, because I put myself in the shoes of a hotelier, I'm being asked to do a forecast or a budget. Or uh, yeah, I've done my budget. I'm now doing a forecast, but I'm saying, well, hold on a minute. I want to do a different way of doing this, so I could get a 12 month prediction for a snapshot that I've got to send up to tick the box and do what I have to do. But then at a unit level, and what I'm reporting up, that is constantly adjusting on a dynamic basis as new data as new data is coming in. Have I understood that? Correctly? Yes, yes, yeah, you have understood it correctly. Um, that's exactly what it is, right? Uh, this notion of forecasting and budgeting has been around a long time uh, because a, uh, a tool like Hotel IQ was never available to automate that process through mm -hmm. the power of predictions, right? Um, and, 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 and again, you always need to take a look at the purpose, and the purpose is to give guidance. Mm -hmm. The purpose is for planning. Then if you have a, a facility, a tool that actually gives you a hell of a lot more accurate and dynamically changing guidance, why not use that? Uh, and you know, why use uh, your budget or forecast that is just based uh, on rudimentary analyses yep. and, yeah. uh, and static data, right? So back, so back to your analogy of Google and my journey, Yes. And if I've understood this correctly, and if I get it wrong, jump, jump in and correct me. If yeah. I was doing it an old way, then if I was traveling into London, I would look at it and say, I traveled into London last February. Uh, it took me an hour and 30 minutes. There's a little less traffic on the road because of the time. So I'll, I'll say I'll do it a little bit less. Yeah, yeah. Whereas what you're saying is 
if I looked at it now and did a prediction for that day, because on Google Maps, you can pick the day you're going and the time when you're expecting yes. to leave. Correct. It has used all of the information that is going on and as much as it can gain from other sources to determine what may be happening. It may already know about some roadworks that are occurring that is slowing yes. up traffic that wasn't Accidents. there last year. And yeah. and so that is dynamically adjusting. And so yes. now can give me a prediction to say, well, actually, you thought it was going to be slightly less, but it's going to be longer because here are all the other factors that weren't happening last time, but are yes. happening now. Is that correct? And that's what, what you just said is the recency of data. Remember, I yeah. said recency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's the recency of data. It's very, very critical. Um, it, uh, it, you know, since we were using analogies, I might as well continue. <laughs> um, Google Maps, uh, yes, it, it, you know, got data is dynamically coming, and uh, it's the recency of data, right? And, and your uh, then ultimate guideline is changing constantly. Well, uh, you stick with that example. Uh, you know those those are those of uh, those of your audience uh, who are uh, old enough to remember this, but there's MapQuest, MapQuest.com, <laughs> and uh, before Google, we used to go into MapQuest.com and put our destination, and it would print out, uh, and it would tell you how long the journey would be, right? Right, and you would print that out literally. And uh, and get in your car and start driving, and and perhaps when you print it out, it said one uh, one hour and thirty minutes, and you're in the middle, you you, you know you, you, you're driving, and one hour and thirty minutes already passed, and you're still not there. <laughs> and um, do you know what I mean? That's yeah. that's that's how it is. Uh, you know, manual forecasting using Excel is like using MapQuest.com, printing out your directions. Got gotcha. you. Gotcha. Versus versus Google. Um, you know, uh, it, it, it's very dynamic. And sometimes it even gives you different routes. Yeah. Uh, and that's what, for, that's what, that's the kind of forecasting yes. and, yeah. or predictions yeah. that we are, we're advocating. Yes. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 So it sounds because we all love Google Maps, if we're using our analogies <laughs> as if it is a more enlightened way of, of forecasting. We have heard so much over the last, couple of years about yes. the utilization of data and machine learning and AI. So it seems tough not to lean into that if it can enable us to predict more accurately and therefore make better decisions. So where's the resistance apart from the obvious? Well, because we've always done it this way. <laughs> and that's it, really. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it is, uh, Trevor. Uh, so you're going to an industry uh which I'm part of, really, I, I come from the hotel industry, right? So uh, I'm a hotelier for many years. And, um, so you go, uh, you go to an industry that is very traditional and you, you tell them, look, uh, yes, I know we've been doing it this way uh, for so long, uh, since 1985. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Excel, right? Uh, and Microsoft introduced Excel. Um, but uh, here's a new way, right? Here is... Uh, here's how we need to do this. And let's just throw out, uh, away the notion of forecast. Why do we forecast? Why do we budget? We know the reasons why, but then if there's something that gives us hell of a lot more accurate guidance, uh, then why stick with this static uh, I I way of doing things? Uh, less, again, less scientific way of doing things. The, but the resistance is, again, uh, the comfort zone. So you're act asking people to get away from their comfort zone, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and you're saying, okay, well, just don't do this anymore um, and, um, and, and and follow this new and advanced way. Uh, it's just resistance to change. As human beings, we all have that, right? Um, I mean, I'd like to think that I don't have it, but I know I do. Everyone does, don't they? Yeah. You know, everyone does that. You just get into the habit of doing things and it's hard to change sometimes. But, um, but then if you, if you just put all the preconceived notions uh, you know, away and, um, and open your mind to the ease of things. Uh, you, the, the current way of doing it is also very manual. It's time consuming. But there, right? is, but there, is, a, there is a sense of control though, I think. We, I was having another conversation that we did for a video that went out the other week. 
yeah. uh, looking at technology. And it was really interesting that somebody brought up uh, a point that some of the resistance is they feel when they move to technology and when they're allowing technology like algorithms to be making the decisions, we feel like we're handing over control. Because when I've got a spreadsheet and I've got a number and I'm applying a percentage to it, I feel, right. I feel like I'm in control of of that that end outcome to some degree. Right. Uh, I mean, I, I do understand that argument. <laughs> when, if you have a, if you if you have a machine actually make decisions for you, mm -hmm. but in this case, it's not making decisions for you. It's actually giving you guidance. You make the decision based on that guidance. So back you to your Google Maps, you can decide what you want to do, but it's giving you an indication, a prediction. It's giving you a prediction. Yeah. And it's giving you a prediction. And I'll, let me give you a metric. Um, the accuracy of, of hotel IQ's predictions is plus or minus 1.8% uh, <laughs> for a 12 month time frame. Wow. That's an incredible high uh, accuracy percentage point. Um, that's uh, plus or minus uh, margin of error is very, very high. And you will not get that, get there manually. If now, you were forecasting to the market and your forecast was within 1.8% one way or right. the other, they, they'd think you're pretty solid. <laughs> exactly. And, 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 and so I, I totally understand the argument. I do. Um, you, you know, making, letting a machine make, your, make decisions for you. You're not doing it. it it's making it. Uh, I don't necessarily believe in that, quite frankly. Um, you know, this comes up, actually. I get this question quite often. I don't... Um, I, I believe in the power of human brain. Uh, the machine itself is created by the human brain. So I believe in the power of human, human brain. I don't think that the machines should make the decision uh, in, 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 in certain areas. Uh, and, and I think the machines need to give guidance, mm -hmm. uh, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to forecasting and budgeting. So that's what automating uh, forecasting and budgeting means. It's actually looking at predictions. Yeah. Uh, that are science driven, that are data driven, and and then you make the decisions accordingly as a human being. And um, so, and, and he, I'll give you another example. Uh, you're a hotel uh, general manager uh, or owner, whatever that might be, and um, you're using, let's just say, Hotel IQ in Hotel IQ forecast management system. And within Hotel IQ's more forecast management system, you uh, again, it's powered by predictions. It's giving you uh, x, uh, you know, x amount of predictions for a certain day, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Hotel IQ doesn't know one thing that you you do you know. Uh, perhaps the street in front of your hotel will be closed between um, a certain days, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and and you believe that it's going to have a great impact on your retail business, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Hotel IQ doesn't know that you you have that fact. Hotel IQ does not necessarily communicate with the municip municipality to get that information sure. Sure. you know that and 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 based on your uh based on based on your feeling as to what the impact is going to be you would come into a tell iq and massage quote unquote massage the number and say okay you know what the street will be closed it'll have an impact on direct impact on our retail business by this much and you uh, have the ability to actually train mm -hmm. the model within a tell iq huh. and okay. say we expect this much of an impact um so that that's what it is that's very what it is very good yeah. i can yeah. i can see why when you see budgeting and forecasting still going on the way it always has done with an excel spreadsheet taking a number from last year and adding a percent and particularly in you know current climate where you know the last two years has been all over the place so what are you doing going back to 2019 and looking yeah, at your exactly. numbers, then I mean, it, it's just so many, so many variables in there. So that's I, right. I, I can I can see why the need to why your argument for leaning into something that that can give you a a much more um, dynamic prediction that is continually evaluating the, the data available. Yeah, the recency of data has never been this important mm -hmm. before. Yeah. Because of the circumstances we are in, because of the fast-changing environment that we are in, um, so for that reason, you're right. I mean, what do you use as a baseline? To 2019 or 2018? Yeah. You know, uh, it's 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 uh, whatever you use, uh, uh, it, it's gonna it's not gonna be a good baseline. And there shouldn't be any baseline. It needs to be zero-based forecasting.
Yeah, no, I think that's a, I yeah. think that's a solid point that came out from it. Well, I, actually, we will. Uh, I think that's pretty much covered all the key points that we were wanted to get across for this discussion. Uh, okay. But I think what we'd also look to do is probably tie up a um, look in the future to see if we can come back on and actually have a look around the the hotel IQ solution. If there's ways that we can do that without obviously breaching confidentiality and bits and pieces and actually see if there's something we can do to bring that sure. to life a little bit. But we, we can explore that as a, as, at a later date. Any any final thoughts from uh, from your side on this? I, th- I think cover the load. And from my point of view, really, really interesting and thought-provoking. Yeah, uh, no, not really. I think all I can say is, um, is throw away all the sacred cows. Um, it, it's really important. People need to open up their minds. Yeah. Uh, and they they need to use uh, the power of science. And I always say this: technology. The technology companies always uh, you know present whatever they have as quote unquote the solution. And uh, and there are tons of technology companies that are out there, and uh, they 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 offer quote unquote solutions to the hotel industry. And yet none of them uh, has ever worked a day in their lives in hotels. And um, to be able to solve this problem for the hotel industry, being a technologist is not enough. Mm -hmm. Being Mm -hmm. a data scientist is not enough. Being a hotelier alone is not enough. You need to have all three to do this right. This is not a matter of technology. Technology is an enabler. It's the single most important enabler, but it is that, it's an enabler. Uh, it is, uh, again, it's the ability to uh, know the trade, in this case, hotel business, and also know the science, in this case, applied economics, and marry them both. Mm-hmm. And that marriage can only be enabled by technology. So technology is not a solution. It's, it's an enabler. The solution is the know-how uh, of marrying the art of running hotels with science of running business. So I want to leave it with that. Sounds like a perfect final comment. (laughs) Wonderful, (laughs) wonderful. And really appreciate you taking the time to join us. Really appreciate you uh, sharing your knowledge and your insights. And thanks so much for, for being with us today. My pleasure. Anytime, Trevor. Take care. You too. Bye bye. Bye. Well, I hope that conversation was of interest. And thanks again to Apo for joining us. If you have any thoughts or views on this conversation, Please feel free to comment below. We value your input and we're happy to follow up with our guests. And also, if there are any topics that particularly interest you, or if there are any specific guests you would like to hear from, please do let us know again in the comments below. If you like the discussion, please don't forget, thumbs up. And if you're interested in more videos, here is a link to our Coffee Time chat playlist. And here is the link to our Expert Insights playlist. And finally, Here is the button if you'd like to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Anyway, thanks again for watching.